Let's learn how to multiply and divide rational expressions. So we're going to go over how to multiply first, then divide, and I'll talk about limiting the domain or restricting the domain. Let's get ready. You're going to need notebook and pencil and a calculator. And, and when talking about multiplying rational expressions, what we are going to do is we're going to factor and simplify. So you're getting great at factoring. You can factor, so you should be successful on this. What we don't want to do is a big distributive property and put it back into standard form because then we can't simplify anything. Those are terms, we can't cross them off. So this is what not to do. You're not doing a big multiplication because then you're going to get in standard form and you can't be crossing things off. So we don't want to do that. Let's get rid of all of that. Instead, we're going to factor. So if I look at this, there's four parts, two numerators, two denominators. This one can factor. That's a difference of two squares. This one can factor. This is a trinomial when a equals one, so we can use our x puzzle. Um, the other ones they can't be factored, but you'll see what happens. So with the first numerator, it's a difference of two squares. So I'm going to take the square root of the first, which is x, the square root of 64, which is eight, one of them is a plus and one of them is a minus. That's going to be all over x minus 8. Notice I'm going to put it in parentheses to treat it as a factor and then it can be simplified. So in the numerator of the second one, we have x plus 5. I'm going to put that in parentheses. And for the bottom one, we're going to factor. So we're thinking about what multiplies to 40 and add to 13. That's going to be 8 and 5. Because a is 1, I can go right to my parentheses with those two numbers. So it becomes x plus 8 and x plus 5. Now comes the fun part. Any factor that's in the numerator of any of this can simplify with the same factor in the denominator to 1. So x plus 5 over x plus 5 is 1. x minus 8 over x minus 8 is 1. x plus 8 over x plus 8 is 1. Be careful, this doesn't just simplify to zero because we crossed off everything. This simplifies to one. That's not going to happen very often, but it might happen. Now let's talk about limiting the domain. Because remember, we don't want to divide by zero, so we don't want our denominator to be zero. So it's easier to see in factored form rather than standard form. So, and even if you've crossed off, then you have to include them. So you want to set each of these equal to 0, and here x can't be 8. Here x can't be negative 8. x can't be negative 5. So altogether, I'm going to say the answer simplifies to 1, but x cannot be 8, negative 8, or negative 5. Those are the restrictions to my domain. There's our solution worked out. So go ahead and write this one down, pause it. See if you can do it, and then I'm going to do it with you. If I look at all of these, all four parts can be factored. The first part, first numerator, is a difference of two squares, so it's going to factor to x minus 2, x plus 2. For the first denominator, I'm going to multiply the trinomial by, th sorry, factor the trinomial by thinking about what multiplies to negative 8 and adds to 2. So that's going to be a positive 4, negative 2. So that's x plus 4, x minus 2 times, this one all I can do is take out a GCF of 8, so don't forget about those greatest common factors. Leaves behind 8, and then we have x plus 4. And in this one, um, they both have an x cubed, so I can take that out as a GCF. That leaves behind one of the x's plus 1. So let's take a look at what we have. Anything in the numerator can be crossed off with the denominator to simplify to 1. So x plus 4's, x minus 2's, and then I have the rest left over. So that's going to be my answer. x plus 2 over the x cubed and then the x plus 1. That's my simplified answer. Now I'm going to set my domain from this part and this part, and it has to include x cubed. So x cannot be negative 4 positive 2, 0, because I just represent 0, and then negative 1. Dividing. So when we divide, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal of the second fractions. 
always the second fractions. So it's going to look very similar to multiplication and it's going to become multiplication. So I'm going to keep the first fraction the same and I'm going to factor it along the way. So we have x cubed, we have a difference of two squares here, so this is x plus 2, x minus 2. It's division, so I'm going to do the reciprocal of the second fraction and I'm going to factor along the way, so this is going to become multiplication. I'm going to factor that trinomial, so what multiplies to 10 and adds to negative 7, so it's going to be negative 5 and negative 2. A is 1, so I can go right to parentheses with an x minus 5 and an x minus 2. And then this 2x comes down below as my denominator. So my x minus 2's can simplify to 1. And in the numerator of the first one, I have 3x's. In the denominator, I have 1x. So I'm going to cross off the 3, change it to a 2, and then cross this x off. Don't lose this 2 down here. And I've simplified everything I can. So in my numerator, I have x squared times an x minus 5. I like to bring my whole numbers to the front, so I'm going to say 2 times x plus 2. And notice I'm not multiplying anything back, I'm just leaving it in factored form. I do have to set my restrictions, and this time it comes from this denominator, this now denominator, and this numerator, because remember it was originally my denominator. So all four places except for the first numerator. So we would say that x can't be negative 2, positive 2, 0, and positive 5. Go ahead and pause it and try this one. Remember, you end up multiplying by the reciprocal of the second one. So my first numerator is just x. My second, first denominator, I can do a GCF, so I'm going to take out an 8. We have x plus 6 left over. I'm dividing, so I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm going to look at this one. So I'm thinking what multiplies to 12 and adds to 8. It's going to be a 6 and a 2. So we have x plus 6 and, oops, x plus 2. From my top, I'm thinking what multiplies to 18 and adds to 11. That's going to be 9 and 2. So x plus 9, x plus 2. I'm going to simplify, so my x plus 2 is simplify, my x plus 6 is simplify. Don't lose that 8. In my numerator, I only have the x. In my denominator, I have the 8 and the x plus 9. I'm going to limit my domain. Um, this one can't be negative 6, negative 9, negative 2, and I do check this and these are just repeated, so those are my limits for that one. So when we factor and multiply, sorry, when we multiply and divide, we're looking to factor and then simplify those like factors to 1. You should identify your restrictions to your domain because we don't want the denominator to be equal to 0. Nice job.